welcome to Grafted In, the program that explores the Jewish roots of the Christian faith. Did you know that Jesus was Jewish? His Hebrew name is Yeshua. Did you know that the Virgin Mary was Jewish? Her name in Hebrew is Miriam. Did you know that all the early apostles were Jewish? Did you know the Apostle Paul said that Christians were grafted in to the Jewish roots? Each week, Pastor Don and Don Alon will explore these and many more fascinating teachings about the Jewish roots of the Christian faith, as well as bringing you up to date on events happening in the land of Israel. This is a half hour you won't want to miss. And now, for today's teaching, let's join Pastor Don and Don Alon. Hello, this is Pastor Don Long, and here we are once again with my daughter Jordan as we're sharing about the festival seasons uh, in the calendar that we're observing here at our church, Faith Christian Church. You know, Jordan, it, it's kind of a, a fun time to get together. We've just been laughing about things that we do here, but, but really, uh, one of the things about being part of the community of faith is that we really get to enjoy Shabbat. We get to enjoy all that God does. Uh, while there is a seriousness about Christian faith and Christian life in these times, there's certainly a joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I think that joy should capture our, our whole life. And as we come into the season we're about to enter now of Passover, uh, that's a time which both has uh, uh, a message that is, we could say, heavy, is serious, but also a message that brings life. Mm -hmm. uh, in the traditional Christian churches, this would be the time when we are thinking about Easter coming and the Easter resurrection story. But really, if you open your Bible and you start looking through the Gospels, other than in mm -hmm. the King James where they misinterpreted or mistranslated a word, you don't find Easter in there. No. Easter's not part of the Bible. Sorry to, uh, to confuse you about that, but it's not in there. Uh, in fact, in the King James, there's one place where the word Easter is used, but it's the translation for the Hebrew word Pesach, Pesach. Mm -hmm. which is definitely Passover. So how is it that we open our Bible and we're reading a, a Bible about Jewish festivals and, and Jewish uh, moeds, God's appointed times. Uh, we are reading about Passover. We're going to talk about that today. How is it that we look in the church today and what we find are uh, stories about Easter, the very mm -hmm. word itself, Easter, the celebration of Easter, we don't find any of that in the mm -hmm. scriptures. That's the result of a uh, Gentile Christianity uh, under Constantine that decided to make a uh, clear break with Jewish roots. Uh, Constantine, when he officially adopted Christianity as a state religion, brought with him a bunch of pagan ideals, and pagan celebrations, and uh, renamed festivals, tried to accommodate the festivals that were in the Bible and uh, adopt them into the uh, pagan festivals that were there. And our purpose today is not to get into Easter and where all that came from, but to say that uh, Yeshua and the 12 disciples, uh, Paul, and all the early evangelists of the church would not have a clue uh, when they came into the church today were they to do that and find the celebration of Easter. Right. Let alone getting an Easter bunny and Easter eggs, mm -hmm. we won't go there. But they wouldn't even understand the term. Uh, they wouldn't understand what has happened to it. And mostly they would ask, what have you done with Passover? Right. Where did right. Passover come from? Now, the reason we need to understand that is because Passover is pointedly a, a Christian celebration. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 says this, Get rid of the old yeast that you may be a brand new batch without yeast, as you really are. For Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival, mm -hmm. not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with bread without yeast, the bread of sincerity and truth. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were living in that time, you knew completely what he was talking mm -hmm. about. But if we were to look into contemporary Christianity and say, so where, where is the Passover? Mm -hmm. What is this festival that he's telling us to keep? And what's this talk about yeast? All of that has to do 
with the Jewish celebration of Passover. That's right. So that if you don't know about the Jewish celebration of Passover, then you, uh, then you don't know what on earth this is all about. Right. You mm -hmm. frankly don't know what Christianity itself mm -hmm. is about. So I want you to uh, look up some verses for me here, Jordan. I'll pass you the Bible. And you can look up Deuteronomy chapter 16. But we need to go back to the scriptures and find out what do the scriptures teach, not what do our traditions teach. Uh, Yeshua once said to those around him that by your traditions, you've made the word of God of no effect. In other words, if I could paraphrase him, because of your traditions, you've eradicated the Bible. Because of your traditions, you've erased the scriptures. And to say that we're followers of Jesus of Nazareth, or Yeshua ben Yosef, to say that we're followers of what he taught, and at the same time to have rejected the very fabric of his life and being, is somehow hard to fathom that mm -hmm. he would be pleased with that. No, I, I believe that Yeshua, Jesus, would have said that these are traditions that we've instituted in the Christian church starting around 300-400 A.D., which have had the effect of removing uh, the awareness of what these festivals all are, are about and removing the connection from the Bible. So let's start our journey then about talking about Passover with uh, Deuteronomy chapter 16, first three verses. Okay. Jordan. Observe the month of Aviv and celebrate the Passover of the Lord your God, because in the month of Aviv he brought you out of Egypt by night. Sacrifice as the Passover to the Lord your God, an animal from your flock or herd at the place the Lord will choose as a dwelling for his name. Do not eat it with bread made with yeast, but for seven days eat unleavened bread, the bread of affliction, because you left Egypt in haste so that all the days of your life you may remember the time of your departure from Egypt. So I think we, I think we know that Passover is about uh, the rescue, if you will, of the deliverance of Israel from the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we know that. Uh, and we all know the story, even within our Christian Sunday schools. I mean, mm -hmm. I think most of us have been taught the story, Moses goes down, let my people go, and, and Pharaoh says no, and, mm -hmm. and finally they come to that last night, uh, the slain of the firstborn, and the lamb is slain, and the blood is put on the doorposts of the house mm -hmm. so that the angel of death can uh, pass over those houses, and they're delivered. But the celebration of Passover is more than a 4th of July celebration. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more than the celebration of marking the event when Israel was delivered from Egypt. That's right. uh, it is really one of God's festivals. Mm -hmm. And in that passage you read there, uh, it's called what? The Passover, Passover of the Lord. Mm -hmm the Passover of the Lord. So the first thing that we need to understand is that when we talk about celebrating Passover, we're not talking about celebrating a Jewish no. festival. No. This is one of those that Leviticus 23 says uh, is the Lord's Moedim, the Lord's festivals. This is God's festival. Nowhere in the scripture, as I said earlier, do we find that God established Easter. You won't no. find God's Easter. No does not exist, no. okay? But what we will find is God's Passover. And if the events and the moeds and the festivals of God are important, then we're going to stand before him someday and have to answer the question, what did you do with my festivals? How did you celebrate my moeds, my festivals? And if we say, well, we never even heard of Passover mm -hmm. or we thought the Jews, you know, over in the synagogue did that. We didn't, that has nothing to do with us as Christians. Well, it might not have anything to do with you as a Christian, but it has everything to do with God. Mm -hmm. And God expects us to honor the days he honors, right. not the days that we honor. Mm -hmm. So if there's any focal point in the year where I think the conflict of the early church with its Jewish roots and the modern church since 300 AD, it's over this one festival. Mm -hmm. Is it Passover or is it Easter? And if you're going to believe the Bible, you're going to have to make a decision. It's Passover that's important, not Easter. That's right. 
And in fact, without an understanding of Passover, you won't even understand uh, what the resurrection of Yeshua is all about. Now, mm. he identified, Paul identifies there, I mean, the writer of Deuteronomy identifies it's God's festival. Secondly, that for seven days we're to eat unleavened bread. Right. Now we see a connection between unleavened bread in Deuteronomy and the yeast or the unleavened bread, the yeast-free bread uh, that Paul is talking about in Corinthians. And we are to do this all the days of your life. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a believer that the church replaces Israel, if you're a believer that somehow uh, Jesus or Paul came along to start a new religion, uh, then you don't have to be concerned about Passover. You can forget this broadcast and go about your way. But if, in fact, you say you believe in Jesus, who is Yeshua, then you need to find out what he said. You need to find out that both Yeshua and uh, Paul observed Passover. And you need to ask yourself the question, why aren't we doing that? Uh, what are we missing by failing to do that? So time and time again, we find this in the scripture, the importance of Passover. Look up for me, Numbers uh, chapter 9, Jordan. Okay. So as we go through the Torah, we find that after Exodus, the Passover is an event of significance in the life of God's people. Uh, we have events in our own nation that are significant, of course, Fourth of July being the, mm -hmm. the, the key one, but you can imagine a generation that grows up never heard of Fourth of July, mm -hmm. and therefore don't even then begin to lose the understanding of independence and the mm -hmm. freedom that we gain. The same thing is likely there. So start with verse 1, and why don't you read, uh, read all the way through verse 14, Jordan. Okay. The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they came out of Egypt. He said, have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. Celebrate it at the appointed time at twilight on the 14th day of this month in accordance with all its rules and regulations. So Moses told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover and they did so in the desert of Sinai at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses, but some of them could not celebrate the Passover on that day because they were ceremonially unclean. So they came to Moses and Aaron on that same, same day and said to Moses, we have become unclean because of a dead body, but why should we be kept from presenting the Lord's offering with the other Israelites at the appointed time? Moses answered them, wait until I find out what the Lord commands concerning you. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites, when any of you or your descendants are unclean because of a dead body or are away from a journey, on a journey, they may still celebrate the Lord's Passover. They are to celebrate it on the 14th day of the second month at twilight. They are to eat the lamb together with the unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They must not leave any of it until morning or break any of its bones. When they celebrate the Passover, they must follow all the regulations. But if a man who is ceremonially clean and not on a journey fails to celebrate the Passover, that person must be cut off from his people because he did not present the Lord's offering at the appointed time. That man will bear the consequences of his sin. An alien living among you who wants to celebrate the Lord's Passover must do it, do it in accordance with its reg regulations and rules. You must have the same regulations for the alien and the native born. Wow, so there's some pretty serious stuff in here again to let us know that that God, our Father God, takes this festival uh, very seriously. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that Paul has taught us that as Christians, we are grafted into right. Israel. You, you know, if you came, somebody were to come to us and say, I, I would really like to be a part of your family. Uh, would you adopt me? And I'd say, sure, I'm glad to adopt you. And so I go through the legal process of adopting you so you're a son or daughter of mine. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, you know, we come to celebrate events in our life, and you say, well, I don't want to celebrate them. Hmm. Well, wait a minute. When you wanted to be adopted into my family, uh, you are saying that you want to be part of our family, not that you're going to pick and choose. You're going to be part of our family. The analogy in the New Testament is, is that 
Gentiles are grafted into Judaism. Mm -hmm. Christian Gentiles are part of the life of God's people. That's Once right. you were not a people, now you're a people. Once mm -hmm. you had no God, now you have, have a God. The whole message of the New Testament is not that there's a, a separate thing called the church, mm -hmm. but this thing called the church is part of God's people Israel, not separate mm -hmm. from it. That's right. And therefore, as we have separated and gone in different ways, Gentile Christians and Jews, uh, we have abandoned things that God says are vital to the family. Mm -hmm. Now, notice what he says there. First of all, that Passover is to be celebrated at the appointed time. Mm -hmm. Not a time when you choose. Right. It's a time when mm -hmm. God chooses. And in fact, how serious God is about that is that one of the one of the laws in the book of Leviticus is that when you've come in contact with a dead thing, it could be a dead animal or you had to bury a relative or whatever, you were considered ceremonially unclean for a period of 24 hours. And so what would happen if you came up to the day of Passover and you came in contact with a dead thing? Mm -hmm. According to Leviticus, well, you can't participate in right. the celebrations of God's people but this is the only celebration I'm aware of where God says Passover is so important that, you that even if you're ceremonially unclean, you can still celebrate, you can still celebrate it. So again, that, that's just telling us how important God thinks it is. Uh, secondly, we find that God makes it very clear that the alien, let's think of the Gentile now, the alien living among you, the alien or the Gentile who's living within Israel, in this case in the wilderness, living among God's people, which means that you've accepted God as your God, mm -hmm. but you haven't become a Jew. You're not a Jew, but you're still expected to celebrate Passover. That's right. So once again, we see that God's very clear. He did not, he never intended that Passover was just for the Jew. No. If he was, he would have said, no, no, the aliens among you aren't Jews. They can't celebrate it. It's right. a Jewish festival. Mm -hmm. But even back then, mm -hmm. before the church was even a thought, he said the alien among you has to celebrate Passover right. as well. That's right. How much more those of us who've been grafted in are required to celebrate uh, Passover. Passover. Mm -hmm. and, and then thirdly, he says this, that when you want to celebrate that Passover and, and you are a Gentile, you must do so in accordance with its rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we are to celebrate Passover the way the Bible says to celebrate it. Not to say, well, uh, I'm, I'm, we do our Lord's Supper thing. We break bread and have a cup and that's our Passover. That is not a Passover. Just a piece of matzah and a, a cup is not Passover. Right. To celebrate Passover, it's the whole Passover meal. Mm -hmm. So we know for a fact that what we call the, in many places, the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper, uh, both again of which are not biblical names. The Bible doesn't refer to them as that. That's a church name. But we know for a fact that was a Passover meal. Mm -hmm. So that Yeshua and his disciples were, were celebrating Passover they would have celebrated the entire meal. It was not just, let's have some little, you know, uh, matzah and, and, and wine, or let's have these little tiny wafers and wine. No, 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 the Passover meal was a Passover meal, and God has already said that if you're going to celebrate it, you need to do so in accordance with its rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. So you say, well, what are you saying, Pastor? Are you saying that the, the, the church is wrong? Yes, I'm saying the church is wrong. Now, Throughout Christendom, throughout the churches, there are many, many churches who celebrate Passover all around the world. But simply because one point in history, an anti-Jewish uh, emperor of the Roman Empire decided we're not going to do that, a course was set in motion that has removed the church, not just from its Jewish roots, it's removed from it the one festival that God said must absolutely be done by Jew and Gentile alike, and it must mm -hmm. be done according to these rules right. and regulations. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of accountability for that. Mm -hmm. Well, it says that. It says the man will bear consequences of his sin if he doesn't celebrate Passover. 
So it re re relates um, not celebrating Passover to sin. So, right. I, I didn't say that. You didn't no, say that. the Bible says that. The Bible says not God celebrating says Passover mm -hmm. is a sin. You know, it reminds me of, uh, of the message that I was sharing this morning in Sabbath uh, teaching about uh, when Yeshua in Matthew chapter 5 mm -hmm. said that if any of you break the least of my commandments and teach others to do that, you're going to be least in the kingdom of God. That's right. But if any of you will keep my commandments and teach others to do that, you'll be called greatest in the kingdom of God. In that passage, Yeshua is dealing with people who are born again, people who are in the kingdom of God, and he's dividing them into two groups of people. Those who are in the church who teach that we can break these commandments without consequences, you are going to be called the least in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And those who are born again in the kingdom of God, but will teach that all of these commandments are vital to keep, they're going to be called the greatest. That's right. So there's going to be a lot of accountability in the body of Christ for the fact that the church has turned its back on scriptures that speak very mm -hmm. clearly. Now, however, this can be recovered. Turn to, uh, turn to 2 Kings chapter 23. You know, in 2 Kings chapter 23, we, um, we read about Josiah. Uh, Josiah was a young boy when he became king, and uh, his father wasn't a particularly good king, mm -hmm. nor his, his grandfather, but his great-grandfather David was. Mm -hmm. And so he, um, he rediscovers the Torah. In fact, they had lost any reading of the Torah. Well, people can go to churches today and never see a Bible. Mm -hmm. Many people call themselves Christians, have never read the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Josiah rediscovered this, and in 2 Kings chapter 23, also in 2 Chronicles chapter 35, it talks about the things that Josiah discovered there, and one was that the covenant had been broken. Mm -hmm. Much like many of us have come to a point where we think, oh my goodness, we aren't doing what God said to do, mm -hmm. so then we decide to do it. Josiah discovered that the people of Israel were not doing what God said to do. He repented of that, and then he began to uh, read that and to clean the temple and to cleanse that out. Uh, but there's a verse in there that says this. Listen to this. The king gave this order. Celebrate the Passover to the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of the covenant. Hmm. He ordered them to celebrate Pat. Now you think, oh my goodness, even the Jews mm -hmm. had failed to celebrate Passover. That's right. Now if you read through that, you'll find that much of the curses that had come upon the nation, much of the challenges and problems that nation were experiencing, was because God's people had let go of observing mm -hmm. something God says is vital. That's right. Do you suppose there's any connection today in our own nation that as our nation has moved away from its biblical roots and as the church in this nation has moved far away from the biblical mandated celebrations, do you think there's any connection mm. between that and some of the challenges and curses that are coming upon our mm -hmm. nation? Mm -hmm. Certainly it's got to be the same thing. So we find that Josiah celebrated the Passover. We find that uh, Hezekiah did the same thing in his reign. Uh, we find that in Ezra uh, chapter 6, listen to this, on the 14th day, first month, the exiles celebrated the Passover. The priests and Levites purified themselves. They were ceremonially clean and together with all those who had separated themselves from the unclean practices of their Gentile neighbors, they celebrated the Passover. Mm -hmm. That's in Ezra. So we find this recurring thing. Mm -hmm. Passover celebrated, it's forgotten. Mm -hmm. When it's forgotten, the nation falls out of the blessing of God and encounters problems. The nation comes back into becoming observant of the Bible, of the Torah, and they start celebrating Passover. And there's blessings. And then generations later, they fall away from that, and they're not celebrating uh, Passover again. They're celebrating, according to Ezra, 
all the pagan holidays, mm -hmm. but not God's holidays. And so the nation is under a curse. And then they come out, they separate themselves, they pull away from the pagan celebrations and start re-celebrating God's celebrations and blessing comes back in the nation. I believe that until the church fully embraces the covenant of God in terms of the festivals, there's not going to be a possibility of blessing for the nation. Mm -hmm. We find that in the millennium all the nations are going to celebrate tabernacles, but they're also going to celebrate Passover as well. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the season in which we're in now, in this month of March 2013, is coming to its climax in Good Friday, uh, what the church calls Holy Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, Easter, Resurrection. But there's only one event. Mm -hmm. It's Passover. Passover. It is Passover. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the next uh, week or two, we're going to go over some of the uh, teachings of how we celebrate Passover, what's involved and, and what's, what's in that. But for us, I think it's important to close today by thinking of the fact that as aliens, as those outside the commonwealth of Israel, that now that we've been grafted into Israel, uh, we need to start participating mm -hmm. in the godly ordained celebrations uh, of the scriptures. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, verse 9, listen to this. You are a chosen people. Peter's writing to the Christians. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The New Living Testament says it this way. Once you had no identity as a people, but now you are God's people. Mm -hmm. When we come into true faith in Jesus, you've come into his faith. Mm -hmm. You've become part of his people. And the celebration of his people is the celebration of Passover. Well, you know, we, uh, we celebrate Passover here at Faith Christian Church on Erev Passover, the evening of Passover, twilight as Jordan read. Mm -hmm. Which if this is the Monday broadcast that would yep. be tonight we would be celebrating it. And it will be at six o'clock we have a, a full meal. Uh, you're certainly welcome if you call us right now as you hear this to to uh, get on the schedule and join us. If not put it in your thinking to be with us for one of our Passover celebrations but this is a festival that is a festival of freedom. It's a festival of, festival of the Lord it is the festival of the good news. It is a celebration of atonement that we now have been made right by the blood of the Lamb. This is Pastor Don Long and Jordan. We look forward to seeing you next week on Jewish Roots. The members of Faith Christian Church thank you for joining us for today's broadcast. We trust the message has been encouraging, the discussion enlightening, and the news informative. For a copy of today's broadcast, you can write to us at Faith Christian Church, 40 Butel Street, Fitchburg, Massachusetts, 01420. Or email us at jewishheart at cfaith.com. Faith Christian Church holds its Sabbath services on Saturdays at 10 a.m. All are welcome to attend.